Although this is very basic circuit, you can see here there's one, two, three, four components. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. So I'm going to go through this now quite slowly so you can understand how this circuit works. So the first thing we're going to do is this is the circuit here. Now all I've done is I've simplified it here. When you look at the Arduino, it'll have this uh, sequence of pins. It'll be the digital output pins. And on one end you'll have the ground pin. And down here, I've placed it into pin 9. You can choose any pin you like, but the code's written for pin 9. So I've set pin 9 to be the output. So what's happening here, that's the ground and that's the voltage supply if you want. In this case it's going to be a periodic voltage supply. So you can think of it as an AC voltage. So that you can visualise this better, I've just redrawn it down here. And what we have here is again, that's pin 9, so this is pin 9 here. And I've written pulses from pin 9, frequency of which give us the note we hear. The pulses of voltage are delivered to this pin. Now, as you know, well, you may or may not know, a capacitor is a short circuit for frequency pulses. So, given that, if this is a frequency pulse, in other words, if we're getting a lot of these pulses per second, then the capacitor won't have enough time to charge up, and it'll look like a short circuit. So you might say, well, why even have a capacitor there if it's being treated as short circuit? Well, I'll explain that in a second. Just think of that as just a short circuit, because that's what's happening with these very fast frequency pulses. On each of these pulses, the voltage is distributed between these two resistors. Now, I've placed this second resistor here just as a protection resistor. You might not really need it because I think there's one already in the Duino board, but I put it there anyway and I've set it to about 1K. So that's R1. This R2 resistor is a trim pot, so it's uh, like a volume control if you like. So that's a trim pot resistor. Now, again, this is just a voltage divider which we looked at before. You've got, you got some resistance on the, on the top here and some resistance on the bottom. Now, if we move that wiper up to the top, we'll have the whole of the voltage dropped across here. Now, if we move that down to the bottom, we're going to have less voltage dropped across this wiper. In other words, across this speaker. So that allows us to set how much current flows through here. Because if there's a higher voltage here, you're going to get more current flow through this part of the wire here, which is wound around this cylinder here, and then it comes down to ground. I'll explain how that works in a second. Now if you move that wiper down to the bottom, you're going to get more voltage drop across the top part of this resistor and hardly anything, only the bit that's dropping across R1, which is a much smaller resistor. So you're going to get less current flowing through here. So what's the reason for the capacitor? Well, what it does is it blocks the low Arduino DC voltage. So what I mean by that is, as I said before, the Arduino's low voltage is between about 2.5 to about 0. So it's still putting out a DC voltage. Now what does that mean? The way a speaker works is relevant here now. If we've got a DC voltage, even a low voltage, across here, then if there wasn't a capacitor there, then that voltage would be drop, always dropping across this coil. It would, some of it would drop across this part of this resistor, and some of it would always drop across this coil of wire. Now a speaker is basically a coil of wire which is wrapped around a cylinder. I've redrawn it here. So this coil of wire is wrapped around this cylinder and on the end of the cylinder is a paper diaphragm. And the diaphragm is just lightly connected to the frame of the loudspeaker so it allows it to vibrate. What happens is whenever you send a current through a coil of wire what you actually do is you could produce a magnetic field. That's uh, something that Faraday discovered back in the 1800s. We've used that, <laughs> that mechanism ever since. What that means is if this produces a magnetic field, if we fix a fixed magnet around that coil, then the two magnets are going to react with one another. And I don't know if you've ever tried to push two magnets together with the same polarity, north and north, they repel each other. Whenever this voltage changes, you're going to get a change in magnetic field. So you, what happens is the voltage will swing between low and high. When that happens, the current goes in and out. When you've got current going back and forth like that, you're producing a magnetic field through this coil. Because it reacts with this permanent magnet, it wants to get away from the permanent magnet, so it moves back. When the current goes in the other direction, it's forcing the other way around it, it wants to go forward. So every time you get a, a current that moves back and forth, 
you're going to get this speaker move back and forth in complete harmony with the way that current is moving back and forth. That means the diaphragm then is going to move against the air and it's going to rarefy the air back and forth and that movement of the air reaches our ears and we hear it as sound. If we didn't have a capacitor there then we'd have this fixed DC voltage always running through this coil that would put a permanent magnetic field through this coil that means your diaphragm would be stressed. You can imagine if it, it was all pushed that way, the whole thing would be pushed and the diaphragm would all be flexed inwards. In fact, you can try that. You can take the capacitor out when you wire this up in Duina and see what happens. Have a look at the diaphragm. With a steady DC voltage, you will cause the permanent magnetic field which reacts with that magnet. It'll either be forced out or forced in. Now, the capacitor stops that from happening because a capacitor will only let through AC voltage they are basically an open circuit to DC voltage so that's the reason we've got the, the capacitor there that value there needs to be about 100 microfarads it's not really too important somewhere around 100 microfarads with the code all we're going to do then is really pulse things at a particular speed and I'll show you how the code works now opened up the Arduino IDE this is the code that's going to generate those pulses to the speaker that's connected to the Arduino. What I'll do is compile it, send it to the uh, Arduino and watch or listen to the results. Let's just quickly discuss it now. So the first line says const int speaker pin equals 9. Now that's the Arduino digital output pin that we're going to send high and low pulses to. The high pulses will be between about 2.6 and 5 volts. So they normally call that a 5 volt high pulse. And the low pulse is below about 2.5. And they normally call that 0 volts. What we're going to do is we're going to emulate the notes in the C major scale. These are the notes we're going to emulate. So there's C, D, E, F, G, A and B. And each of those has a separate frequency. So we can see here we set this is an array. So note names with two square brackets. That's defining an array, and then when we put the curly brace here, and they put all these letters in, that's filling up that array. So now note names has all of these in its array. So the first box it will have a C, and the second box it will have a D, etc. Note names array is a char array. What char means, it's an individual character, because that's all we need to store, so we've just set it as a char. So these are just individual characters. This is an unsigned integer. Now, the reason it's unsigned is we're not going to have minus numbers here, so we just put unsigned. You could have just used an int, really. It's not really necessary to use unsigned, but put it in there just to explain the difference between signed integers and unsigned integers. Unsigned integers means there's never going to be a minus integer here. Be mapping these to these letters. So C is, in fact, 262 hertz, and if you go up to here to A, because um, A is always 440 hertz, so you can see that the second to last one here is 440. Now, note count, that's basically just a counter, and it's going to tell us how many note names we're using, and here you can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, you might say, oh, well, there's only seven notes anyway. Well, actually, there's, there isn't seven notes. You could have an octave high, and you could define... Uh, an octave higher or a couple of octaves higher so you could have C an octave higher which would be you know twice that value but we're only we're only going to use these ones so we only need seven so that's been put there so if you do want to include more notes later and you want to put add those frequencies and come up with your own tunes you can do that now this command size off it takes note names and it counts how many entries there are to so this counter which we called note count and because there's seven in here, that's then set to seven. Now we've got the actual musical score. This again is an array and it's a char array again. And you'll notice in this string, what's gonna happen here is this score is gonna hold each of these. So you're gonna have in the first box, you're gonna have C, in the second box, you're gonna have all the way up to the last box. And then all those little boxes will be stored in this array called score. So this set of notes here, will represent a piece of music. So uh, we'll listen to what that sounds like in a minute. Also, we've got this other uh, variable called score length. Now that's doing the same as note count. It's counting how big that score array is and it's storing it inside a const byte, 
we set the score length to the size of this array and if you count them all up that would be equal to score length because we've used size off again yeah so it says here number of notes in the score the other thing we're going to do is each of those notes is going to be given an amount of time to play and that's what this beats mean so you can think of that as keep keeping time that's the kind of rhythm yeah so for example in here the the seventh note here is two units long so we're making that a little bit longer than the rest of the notes so that's another array and uh, here these are just being set up here to set the speed now we've got the the setup again and this time we're going to set the digital output pin which is speaker pin and that we know is 9 so that pin 9 is going to be defined as an output so that's all the setup does and then for the rest of the program we're just inside this endless loop again like the other program that loop will continue uh, running all the time it's going to look at the score length so remember the score length is the length of this musical score we're going to run through all of those letters so this loop here will loop through each one of those letters and you can see in here it's going to index so you're going to go from i equals naught to i smaller than score length and then we increment i so in the first loop through i is going to be zero and then we're going to pick up the beats array remember that's the same number as how many was in the score length and that gives us the beat for that note so that's the other thing i didn't say each one of those matches one of these so that first lot will match the first lot in here so that has to be the same length as this and then you'll get all of the the notes will be uh, matched up to the amount of time that they've got to be waiting for so that's what that's doing here and it's using the speed to set the duration yeah so remember that speed above we set it we always have to manipulate our numbers a little bit so that we get real time as opposed to the Arduino time which is in milliseconds so that's what we do with the speed here yeah and then finally in that loop we call this function I'll go through the function in a minute called play note so that's going to take the score uh, I and we've worked out our duration on this line yeah so we pass these through as arguments to this function that we've defined called play note and then it just continually goes through that and it will play each of those notes one by one with the duration that we've given it I mean you could speed the duration up by increasing this speed value here so if we go up to the top here we could actually increase the beats or, or slow it down by changing this number so you can play around with that so that's what that beats about so that gives us our duration and that will play each note given that duration and then once the whole score has been played and completed then it'll wait for four seconds and then do the loop again so that's really how it works now we can just go through the play note function so remember the play note function it takes a letter that's a note and the duration so here we can see it's it's picking up the note which is a chart and it's picking up the duration which is an int so what it does then is now note count was set at the top here that was a global variable so if we go up to the top here we got note count and that's the size of that array so we can use that to loop through all of those notes so that's what we're doing here we're going to loop through all of those notes and what we're going to do is try and find that note and we're checking if the one that's passed through is equal to any one in any of those note names in that array that we defined at the top and if it is there's a built-in function in Arduino called tone and all it needs is the output pin the, the frequency and the duration the frequencies is how we map these numbers to those letters if we're given a note then we know it's going to be the same index so that's okay we, we know we're going to get the same index in the frequencies because the frequencies is a one-to-one -one mapping whatever the frequency is in the frequency array is matched exactly to that note so for example like I said the A the A note is 440 Hertz so if this note name happens to be A then we know that frequency that the second to last entry in that frequency array is is the frequency for the note A so then we're sending the note A through along with the duration to the tone and that's it that's all this does if you go through this code very carefully it's quite simple to understand what's going on we could put in any musical score we like here if you want to change this musical score then the beats has got to match with the notes so that that number one there matches with that number C and the very last number there in that 
beats array to matches the very last note in here C. If you want to add more notes, for example if you want to have the octave above this range then you're going to have to add more frequencies as you make that array and it, again there are one to one 494 maps to the B, 440 logically maps with the A and with the score the beats match up with each of these letters so that's the only thing you'd have to change if you wanted to put a new score in here you just have to add a beat for each letter you add add the right frequency if you wanted to add more frequency but really I mean you could just use these notes and come up with another score just using these notes the one thing I will say is the Arduino is not really designed as any kind of synthesizer or anything so this is going to sound like a really early 1970s you know computer game or something there isn't anything sophisticated going on here it's a very very metallic sort of sound what we'll do now is we'll compile this and then send it over to the Arduino and listen to what it sounds like so I'll do that now and we'll just start to compile it and now it's uh, compiling and then and there we go So it waits for four seconds. I don't know if you can recognise that. It's not. It's not a wonderful reproduction, but it's a, it's it's an attempt. But you can play around with that and modify that. Anyway, let me just stop that. What I'll do is to just quickly show you the uh, the circuit for that, and just quickly remind you of what the circuit is. Okay, so this is the circuit. I'm just holding this camera now, so there's the speaker. Just a very, very simple 8 ohm speaker. And that's connected in with the rest of the circuit there. You can see there's the potentiometer, so we can uh, change the volume of the speaker. And there's the protection resistor there going down to earth. There's the, the 100 microfarad capacitor. And the other side of that then goes to on that green lead then goes to the pin 9 which is over there and then the earth pin is that last black lead plugged in there and that black lead then goes to the earth rail so that's really the, the whole circuit and you've got one, of the, one side of the uh, speaker cable goes to earth and the other side of the speaker cable goes to third leg on the wiper leg on the potentiometer. So that's it really. Uh, and if, of course, if I just plug in the uh, the uh, the uh, Arduino, then, uh, like I say, because that uh, has that code now has been written to this uh, Arduino, we don't even need the. Uh, we can just plug that in to a power source which I've got a power source here, so I've unplugged the uh, the computer here now and if I just plug in a power source it will just start running that program straight away so if I plug it in that would get... okay let's take that off okay that would get annoying after a while uh, if you haven't recognized that, that's a twinkle twinkle little star uh, so uh so yeah so that's uh that's that's the whole thing and uh that's that's basically the last uh tutorial I'm going to do on Arduino for a little while and uh hope these have been useful to you and I'll uh, catch you on the next video